Hi guys, today I made a video on this wonderful Black Panther cake. I'm so excited to show you my cake decorating process and this was I think one of my favorite designs so let's jump in. I made a vanilla cake because that is the request of the birthday boy and I ended up doing three tiers because I knew it was going to feed a lot of guests. Um, and also it looks really impressive. The taller your cake looks, the more, you know, professional it looks. So I ended up doing three tiers. I even out the cake layers because the more square they are right off the bat, the easier it is to get your cake level at the very end. The next thing I'm working on is some fondant. So the only pieces that are going to be fondant on this cake are the little accent pieces because I just don't like the taste of fondant very much. So I've really gone for a buttercream finish for the most part or modeling chocolate. That's pretty tasty too. So here I am doing um, the birthday boy's name. His name is Camden and he loves Black Panther. So I decided to make his name and then I'm going to put that on that Black Panther necklace that he has that actually turns into a suit, you know. So um, that's what I'm going to make uh, and put his name on that. The cutouts I have just make it really, really easy to make everything look uniform and even and neat. Um, but I do like to go ahead and go after I've cut everything out and just go around the edging. So it doesn't look like it's torn, um, but has a nice clean finish. So just use your exacto knife, go around it, um, and make it nice and clean. The necklace for the Black Panther has these kind of diamond shapes to it, and they taper as they get, go to the side, they get smaller. So I, you know, started doing a little diamond shape cutout, and I thought, okay, so I'm gonna center this, see how it looks and then have one diamond shape for each of uh, the letters and then have an additional diamond shape for the edge uh, just to extend it out a bit and make it look um, a little bit larger as well. And also, I thought the diamond shape towards the end should get smaller. Um, so it's kind of a trial and error when you're decorating. <laughs> you know, you, you try something, hey, it maybe it doesn't work, scrap it try try something new measure it out measure again but that's really my cake decorating process really at this point you may have noticed i am not using my exacto knife i was having issues with attaching the blade i don't know what was wrong with the mechanism on the inside but my blade would fall out and i just put in a new blade so I had to switch to just a small paring knife. I use a paring knife often anyways. Um, and for you who are thinking um, she's crazy on cutting right on that stone, you know, um, the stone is not gonna get hurt whatsoever. It's more like my blade's gonna get dull, but that's okay because I can just go ahead and sharpen my knife afterwards. It's no big deal. Now I'm going to work on the mask of the Black Panther and it's just a white cutout. Typically, I would print this out and then use the printout as my guideline, but honestly, I was being a little lazy <laughs> and didn't feel like getting my printer to work because I was having issues with it. So um, I'm just looking off of this on my phone and doing it freehand, but for anybody who is you know, starting out, I highly recommend just printing this out, you know, um, and then go ahead and using some wax paper um, with the fondant and then just getting it just right and using the outline. So it's really nice and easy to do that and give yourself that template. This did take me the longest to do, but it was well worth it because as part of the design of the cake, this is probably the most important focal piece and I did want to take some time to get it right. So don't feel frustrated if you're just starting out and maybe it's taking you, I don't know, an hour or so just to do <laughs> uh, just one, one piece or one decorative part of it. But really, uh, people don't understand. It, it takes a long time and I think the more practiced you are, the faster you'll get. But I actually enjoy doing this. I think it's relaxing and 
Uh, this is honestly one of the fastest cakes I've ever made just because I've had the practice in doing it. So don't give up. I am placing this on an eight inch round cake board to make sure that it fits because that is the size of the cake. And you always wanna make sure that your proportions are gonna be right on. Your decoration isn't too large or oftentimes too small for your cake. It looks good and it fits. So the next part is going to be the silver necklace. I did have some silver spray that I used. Um, it just comes in a can. I was gonna use luster dust um, and then, you know, dilute it in a little bit of alcohol and paint it on. But the spray is honestly a lot quicker and it kind of has a thicker coverage. So I opted for that this time. I was having trouble with the first can, so I had to go ahead and break into a second can um, and use that. So that's what's going on here with the two cans. And now I'm gonna work on the claw. Black Panther has this classic claw and uh, it's black with silver again. So I'm using black fondant and white fondant. I'm gonna roll out four pieces um, of fondant, just cut them up and it's going to look like his claw is coming in through the cake outward. And I have this great idea to uh, use, I don't know, a knife or something to scrape along the side of the cake and expose the innard of the cake and make it look like it's been scratched from the inside out. Um, and I think it's just gonna give it a really cool effect. And here I'm just deciding whether or not to use some uh, toothpicks or skewers to attach the black with the white or if I'm going to just use water. I initially used water and then it just wasn't sticking uh, quickly enough. I think if it had more dry time it would have stuck but since I didn't you know I was going to put it on right away I used skewers. But I also needed to paint the white claws silver so I went ahead and did that and let those dry. So for the cake board, I'm actually using two cake boards, the eight inch round and the 10 inch. The 10 inch, I'm going to put some black fondant around it and decorate it and make it look like he's wearing part of the costume on the cake board itself. Um, and the eight inch is going to be what the actual cake is sitting on and what I'm frosting on. So two different things. Um, and here you can see I'm having some issues with my fondant. So I decided to break out the powdered sugar. You can use that. A lot of people use cornstarch to make it less sticky, but I have powdered sugar on hand. Um, and it was just sticking too much to the surface. So I put on some powdered sugar and then of course it wasn't sticking enough to the board itself. So then I had to combat that with adding water to stick it onto the cake board. I did this part in pieces because at the end, I'm going to decorate this black portion and make it look like it's part of the costume and there's different lines in the costume itself. Um, so it's not just like a plain black sheet of nothingness. It has texture um, and definition. So it's important when you think about materials, you're thinking about that texture and what it looks like and what you're trying to convey so I have the outer piece covered around and now I'm going to just take the back of my knife and give it some indents and make it look like it's that kind of, I don't even know what material it is really supposed to be, um, vibranium, I guess, <laughs> but that's what it is. So just making it look like the costume itself. And now that the necklace pieces have dried a little bit, I'm going to center them, try to make them look like they're in the very front and that they look pretty good. And the smaller pieces are gonna go towards the end there. And I'll go ahead and add Camden's name in on those pieces. And I kept them white because I like the color contrast because uh, the mask is white and then the name is white with the silver. I think it looks great. So the claws dried as well, and I did end up sticking them with some water. And like I said, at the end, uh, when I went to attach them, I did use toothpicks to skewer them, securing them to the cake. 
Whoever you give this cake to, please let them know that there are support structures in the cake like this because that would be horrible to cut into and not realize there's toothpicks in there. The American buttercream I ended up using because of the fact that it really holds up well. Um, it doesn't really slide around. I think some of the other buttercreams don't have that sturdiness to them, so uh, my go-to is American, but I use all butter, real butter, and I did use three sticks of salted butter and five sticks of unsalted butter. It gives it such a great flavor. I promise you will not regret doing this. I mix the butter around a bit on its own just to give it that homogenized texture because I didn't want one stick to be a little colder than the other or whatnot or to have any lumps. So it just made it all smooth. And then I actually eyeballed the powdered sugar, don't hate me, but I really do eyeball it when I do it. I go off of color, consistency, and taste. So I add it in a little bit at a time. Um, and then just give it a quick taste at the end and if I need a little bit more powdered sugar I go ahead and add that gradually but if you actually are looking for a recipe you know just go go on Pinterest or online and just type in American buttercream recipe and it will give you the correct ratios to make it I added my vanilla extract at the end here and then give it a little taste as well and then it was a little thick so i added a little tiny bit of water just to loosen it up a little bit um, just be careful when you're doing this a tiny tiny bit at a time will really work people do use milk as well i just don't like to because if people leave their cakes out on a shelf i like the whole cake to be shelf stable okay i love this part of the cake making process it is just layering the cake. So I do a dollop of the buttercream on the bottom of the cake um, round, just because you don't want that cardboard to be sliding around. And then just layer your cakes. Just make sure they're even and they're not wonky or anything like that. If they feel a little uneven, just take your serrated knife and even it out as much as possible. I'm doing a very thin layer of frosting here in between the cake layers because the entire outside is going to be butter creamed as well. And it's going to be a pretty substantial thickness. So I just do a little bit at this point. So if you don't know this, it is significantly difficult to color buttercream black. I actually tried to find it ready died at the store and I just couldn't find it so I did make some buttercream um, I just added my black food coloring and it came out gray which is what I expected um, and then I saved a portion of my buttercream and what I did is I melted it down in the microwave and added more black food coloring and then I whipped it up again and it actually turned a lot darker at first it wasn't turning darker as the frosting sat there for a while it did actually end up turning a lot darker so it was a successful technique i couldn't use any cocoa powder um, a lot of people recommend that but i you know camden just didn't want chocolate frosting he wanted vanilla so i had to go with it at this point i'm just doing the crumb coat it's the first coat I do two coats here, and it's just going to seal in everything and make it look very even. And I threw the whole cake into the freezer for about 15 minutes before I did my second coat. So here I'm starting my final layer, so I do want to make sure it looks nice and neat. Also you can tell the difference between the bottom buttercream and the top one in color. And as it sat there, the color actually got a lot darker, um, very much black. It wasn't like pure black, but it was really close. And because I melted the buttercream, it gave it that smooth texture. And I think I'm going to do that from now on, on my second coat, is just melt a little bit of the buttercream 
whip it back up and it's just such a great technique to get really nice smooth buttercream. I love that I ended up trying this technique because also the texture of this buttercream just makes it look metallic-y or just like a fabric that Black Panther would actually be wearing. So it actually turned out to be for my advantage. I learned something new um, and I love trying out new things. So if you ever have any doubts about anything, just try it out and see what happens and you may find out a new way of doing something. Okay, so I get really nervous about transferring the cake, but basically I just use that big offset spatula, scrape it underneath and just try to move it in one foul swoop. Here you can really see how black the frosting actually got because look how black the fondant is around the border next to the frosting. It's very, very close. So I thought it was really successful. And I'm going to put the Black Panther mask on the very top here. I'm just going to be very extra careful. Once I place it, I cannot unplace it because it is buttercream. If you were placing it on fondant, you have some wiggle room, but here I really don't. It's a one shot kind of a deal. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. So I'm moving on to the claw portion. Here is where I'm going to use the toothpicks and skewer them and add them onto the side of the cake. I'm using a small butter knife to whisk away some of the buttercream here to make it look like the claw marks. And it's super effective because underneath I have that lighter gray buttercream and it just really makes it stand out. All right, and here is the final result. Please let me know what you guys think, what your favorite part was. I just loved making this cake. It was well thought out and simple and very, very effective. So if you want to copy my idea, you can, you're welcome to. If you like this video, give it a little thumbs up and follow my channel. I really appreciate you guys taking your time today to watch this video. Thanks again. Love you guys and I'll see you next time.